Hi, this is Susanna Bowling and the Times Square Chronicles, live from the Lambs, the oldest theatrical club in New York City. Today we're interviewing Dorothy Lyman. Dorothy is best known for her roles in Another World, All My Children, Opal Gardner, and Mama's Family. Did you know she directed many episodes of The Nanny? She also was in Blow with Johnny Depp and is now written a brand new play as well as directing it called In the Bleak Midwinter. Welcome, Dorothy Lyman. I am so excited to be interviewing you. I was a huge fan of your work, both in All My Children and Mama's Family. Oh, well, thank you, Susanna. That's very kind. I read that you called it All My Paychecks <laughs> and that you were extremely bicoastal during that time. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, there was um, uh, about a year where I was still under contract to All My Children here in New York and Mama's Family was in production in California and so they very kindly taped Mama's Family on Sundays for me and then I took the red eye back and worked on the soap until Wednesday and then flew back to California and uh, we did the show in at Mama's Family in four days Thursday Friday Saturday and and Sunday and um, they let me miss the first day of rehearsal in California and they let me sleep through the morning blocking uh, <laughs> on the soap on Monday. I would get in at dawn on the red eye and go right to the studio, go to sleep wow. till after lunch. So uh, it, it was amazing opportunity, you know. But you also, s how many soap operas were you on? Oh, you know, I did the soaps for like 15 years. The first one I did was called Edge of Night and it was still live in those days. And my daughter, who now is 40 mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> was uh, just a baby. Um, I was f spent four years on Another World, which I, I called Another Meatball. Um, <laughs> all my children, though, was the part that, y you know, kind of sparked my career and everybody's imagination, you know. How did you come up with that characterization? <laughs> You know, uh, in 1980, I, I produced and directed a play called A Couple of White Chicks Sitting oh. Around Talking by John Ford Noonan, the, the great John Ford Noonan. And um, one of the two characters in that play was called Hannah Mae Bindler, and she was from Texas, and she was just um, a, a great, big, outrageous character. And frankly, I stole that character from that play and put my own spin on it, but that was really the genesis of it. You know, the role on All My Children was written supposedly for a kind of a heavy set, kind of brutish woman who was only supposed to stay on the show for six weeks, kind of bring Jenny's character on, abuse the kid, and get kicked out of town. Um, when, when they saw my audition, they changed their concept of the part and hired me um, and Kim Delaney and I you know it was her first day acting ever and she was 17 years old wow. and she was so, sort of shaking that first morning luckily our first scenes as we came into Pine Valley were on a bus so all we had to do was sit there you know I said to her don't you worry I said now just whatever I say you just act like you're like so embarrassed about it and you could just die with your mother saying all this stuff I said and don't worry about it you know I'll handle it and um I had the privilege of watching that young woman grow into a fantastic actress over the two and a half years we worked together on that show. And we've remained friends, and um, although I live out here now and she's still out west, so we don't see each other, but I wish her all the best. Now, you also mentioned directing uh, The Nanny for CBS. Yes. Yeah. But was that your first directorial job? You know, um, I had directed, my first directorial job was, of course, the play, A Couple of White Chicks Sitting Around Talking. Which got great reviews. Oh, I, I know. It ran for a year. It was put out a national tour. It kind of revitalized producing off-Broadway. People realized you could actually make some money in those small theaters again. Um, and on Mama's Family, our director, who had done 11 years of The Burnett Show and 10 years of Three's Company, he was the one who really taught me how to direct television, although they would never 
give me an episode to direct on Mama's Family the whole nine years we were doing it. It was always a deal breaker in my contract. You know, they were very resistant to giving me an opportunity to direct, although they taught me how to do it. So I spent like five years trying to get find my way in as a television director. I would observe on any set that would let me. My sister-in-law for 20 years, Candace Bergen, we were married to brothers, French, French brothers. Her husband, film director Louis Mal, and mine, his producer, Vincent Mal. And Candace allowed me to observe on her set of Murphy Brown in the old sure. days. And, you know, finally, one of my best friends, Fran Drescher, became a TV star, and she was the one who made it possible for me. She said in the second season, if you are serious about this and will commit to observing on this show the whole season, maybe I can get you one episode to direct in the third, uh, third season. And so I did, and then around February, they turned around and sort of looked at me in the back of the studio, and I thought, hmm, are they going to ask me not to come back anymore, you know? But instead, the associate producer took me out and said, you know, we'd like you to direct next week's episode. How do you feel about that? Because their, their main director um, had told them that she didn't want to come back for another season. So they gave me a chance to direct an episode at the end of season two. And that episode ha happily got the biggest laugh spread of any episode they'd ever had. And at the end of that week, um, they offered me the entire third season. So I did seasons three, four, and five. I directed 75 consecutive wow. episodes of a hit show on CBS, a major network. But I must say, after that, I never directed another minute of television. Why? Well, because I'm a woman and an older woman. I, this is the only thing I can think of, because I did 75 episodes of The Nanny and with no problems, <laughs> you know. Um, people say, oh, you didn't have the right agent. No, I had six agents. <laughs> so finally. No, it's very true. People say that this does not exist, but it do definitely exists. No, it does. Exists. It does. And this is why I have begun to write roles for myself and why I, you know, have been making independent films. I got so tired of trying to get my projects made in Hollywood that I bought a farm in the Catskills and left there in a huff in 2003 <laughs> when my youngest son went off to college. You know, I felt that a career that had really been thriving, you know, for many years suddenly ground to a halt for no other better reason than I turned 50. So um, I moved to a farm in the Catskills and began to raise eggs and uh, brought my horses there. And um, it was... I stayed there for 17 years, and last year my children said, Mom, you know, you live too far away from New York, you know, we're all here. It's two and a half hours. Three, well, three. And I have my three grandkids now, so I felt I was missing everybody's life, so they persuaded me to sell the farm. And uh, frankly, I had a very hard time letting go of my old life, and that is what I tried to write about in this play, In the Bleak Midwinter. Uh, about an old farm woman whose husband has died a year ago and her only daughter comes up for President's Day weekend and just decides that it's too much for her mom and that um, they want her to move to Florida. <laughs> so are you also acting in this play? Yes. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. Now, are you directing it as well? No. Um, no, I... I uh, uh, invited a young protege of mine from my days teaching at the New School for Drama here on Bank Street, a um, gal called Katie McHugh. Uh, I invited her to work with us and coordinate the production for me and direct uh, insofar as I am directable. Look, I love acting and it's a lot easier than <laughs> directing or producing. Absolutely. You know. And I must say I'm very surprised at 71 to realize that I am a writer, you know, that I can own that, that it's not, that the first play that I wrote in 1995 was not an accident, and the second play I wrote, you know, three years ago was not an accident. So um, it's, it's an exciting thing to realize you have a skill late in life. Also, it's I just always been my personal mandate to create great roles for women. And, um, and a vehicle for myself, you know. I, I don't know how many m more 
years one has to feel well and strong and able to remember a play, <laughs> you know. But you create such amazing characters. I mean, that was what I loved about you on All My Children and Mama's Family, Battlestar Galactica, oh, yeah. uh, Blow. Uh, speaking of Blow, what was it like to work with Johnny Depp? We had the best day that day. He was just the greatest. And he never said the same thing twice. It was the first time I'd been on a film set. And I must say, that director, Ted Demi, who died shockingly way too young, Very um, too young. was wonderful. He said, it doesn't matter that you repeat exactly. You know, you, you just do whatever you feel like doing. And that was the first time I felt the kind of freedom in, in film. Usually, they're so precise that you repeat everything exactly the same. And my daughter, um, who now is Martin Scorsese's executive producer, was working with Ted at that time as his assistant. And um, so, yeah, it's very personal to me, that film. Is there any role that you'd like to take on? Um, you know, uh, at this point, I'm interested in my own voice. Hmm. Uh, so. No, I'm not the sort of actress who wishes she were doing Long Day's Journey into Night or something like that. No. But if you could have your dream role, what would that be? Well, um, uh, honestly, you know, I, I love Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, that ah. play um, about those, those sort of corrupt real estate uh, agents. But um, I don't think Mamet would ever allow women to do that play. <laughs> you got into talking about women being dismissed at 50. The Me Too movement has done a lot for women, but I also think it has taken a lot from women. Do you see the climate right now better for women, the same, or is it really just all talk and no action? You know, I see my daughter, who has become one of the most powerful and well-respected producers in our business never has had any trouble. You know, I feel that my generation has possibly paved the way for, for younger women and that, that there is change, that there is change. Um, you know, I, I was promised in the 70s that it was the year of the woman, you know, that things were going to change for us. And when I was directing The Nanny, there were only nine of us in the Directors Guild who did four-camera sitcom directing. Mm -hmm. Now there are many, many more women. But um, I'm happy to have been a trailblazer. I had the first all-female booth in, in Hollywood, and the DGA wrote us up about that. You know, when I took on the job of directing, there were two men in the associate director and the technical director chairs, which are on either side of the director. And um, they just didn't get why me, uh, an actress, you know, comic actress, would be getting that job, you know. Oh. And they were not helpful. So after season two ended, the producer came to me and said, is there anything we can do to make next year easier for you? And I said, yeah, you could get rid of those two guys and get me a couple of nice women who are gonna help me out here instead of stand in my way. When does the bleak midwinter open and where's it playing? Um, this play is on at Shetler Studios and Theaters, 244 West 54th Street, up on the 12th floor. And it is running only this week and next week because it's an equity approved showcase and they only allow you to do 15 performances if there are any equity members in the cast and there are, are two uh, actors in our wonderful company of actors by the way Abigail Hawk who's on Blue Bloods Tim Bone and my two young protégés Jean Lauren Smith and Brennan Lowry two young actors who've come twice down to Mexico and done my plays down there with me and so I'm happy to give them this New York opportunity and then there's a wonderful sixth member of our cast uh, an actress called Shannon Stowe who was one of our students down at the new school for drama and um, just terrific and what's next for you after this show well I'm hoping that this is not the end of this play frankly I would very much like to um, find a general manager who would help me get together and proper off-Broadway production of it, put a star in my role, Frances McDormand or 
Kathleen Chalfant or someone like that who could sell a few tickets and, um, and put this play on so that it has a longer life. I think it, for some reason, is touching something that a lot of people are dealing with right now, what to do with an aging relative, how to downsize a dependent adult, you know, what to do with mom and dad <laughs> when their lives are winding down. And you heard it here, live from the Lambs. <laughs>